welcome Jean. Um, Jean is our guest Thank for you. today, and we're going to be talking about her Pilates studio and her teacher training program. So she owns the studio ABOW SF, which is in San Francisco, and she also owns ITTP or ITT Pilates, which is <laughs> an international Pilates teacher training program. Um, and so I'm just going to ask her a few questions about those, and then we'll turn it over to the audience to ask their questions um, as well. Great. So my first question is, Jane, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, well, um, I would say um, the most important thing about me is that I love movement, and I have all my life, so <laughs> that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, and... Um, it's always been a very fulfilling part of my life. I was a professional dancer before I learned about Pilates. Um, and I've also been a professional trapeze artist, a trapeze flyer. Um, so I do love movement. But when I was coming off of my dance career uh, in the early 1990s, um, I found Pilates. Um, and I actually first took... A, Pilates mat class at a San Francisco dance studio where I was studying. Michelle Larson from Santa Fe, New Mexico came up and taught a class, one class. And I found it surprisingly challenging. Uh, I was like blown away. I thought I was strong. I've been a dancer, no core. I had no core strength. So I was like, this is interesting. How did I get this far in my dance career and have no core strength? <laughs> so there wasn't much I could do about it because there was no Pilates studios in San Francisco at all. And it wasn't until a few years later that Madeline Black came onto the scene and moved to San Francisco and opened her studio. And that's where I started my teacher training with her. And she had the original A Body of Work studio. Um, so I immediately started teaching at her studio. And um, I also taught at chiropractic offices at St. Francis Hospital, where they have a dance medicine department that utilizes Pilates. Yeah, it's really cutting edge, first in the country to do that. Um, and that's where I started. And that's how I kind of swerved into Pilates. <laughs> that's great. So I know that now you're kind of in charge of ABOW SF, and one thing that's really important there is this phrase, mind-body fitness. Can you explain mm -hmm. a little bit what that means? Yeah, um, I would say that um, as a movement-based person, um, I've always felt very fulfilled in movement such as dance. Um, it gave me a way to express movement with emotion everything was involved, my mind, my emotions, my body. Mm -hmm. um, so that completeness, um, I found extremely satisfying and um, fulfilling. And so I was looking for something like that after dance. Um, and I found it in Pilates. And what I learned by practicing Pilates, that one, it brings a lot of joy to me. Mm -hmm. the, the, the movements bring joy, and that was something I really wanted in a new practice. And I found that that joy was accessible to everybody, that as I taught, others were experiencing that same joy of movement. And I think it comes from allowing yourself to be utterly in the moment, completely present, letting go of everything else, letting go of your own judgments of yourself, uh, letting go of your stories, letting go of your grocery list, <laughs> and just listening to your body, going inside. Um, and I think that's extremely fulfilling and satisfying and, and takes us out of other parts of our life. Um, so that's, to me, what mind-body fitness means, and I feel like it's accessible to all of us. Um, and that's what I believe in, you know, that's our mission for a body of work. Yeah, that's really beautiful. I love what you were saying about kind of the joy of doing it and being in the moment. That's really amazing. Um, so I know you also own ITT Pilates. Um, can you tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about that, what it is, and what inspired you to start it? Yeah, so ITT Pilates stands for Integrated Teacher Training Pilates. Um, so I started teaching other people to be instructors in the early 1990s. And at that time, I was teaching uh, for another organization called Pilates Institute, which is no longer around. 
And um, I kept running against, uh, you know, just not feeling like I had all the material available. And then what you actually meet when you go to the studio and work with a client, there's like a lot of information missing between <laughs> those two. So I decided I really wanted to help my students um, improve that um, experience and, and close that gap for them. So first I started teaching my own teacher training program and I was doing that for a few years while I was running a body of work. Um, I had owned it by then. And um, then uh, myself and three other master trainers, Madeline Black, York Chabowski, um, and Deborah Schubert came together and we said, you know, we each owned our own Pilates studio. We were colleagues who knew each other for years and felt like we could create a better teacher training program, better than what we saw anywhere else in the country. That was more science-based, movement science, anatomy-based, and filled that gap for our students between what is a teacher training program and what you really meet in the world and what kind of clients you have to deal with. Um, and at that time, it's also worth noting that the clientele for Pilates was all of a sudden getting into the baby boomer age group, the mm -hmm. older clients who come with pre-existing injuries. And they're, they're starting their life looking at it like, how can I stay healthy for the rest of my life? And how can I keep moving for the rest of my life? And I didn't feel like that was being taught in previous um, Pilates teacher training programs. So we put our expertise together and we created the material for ITT Pilates. We co-taught it and shared the teaching for a few years. Um, this is 2002 to 2005, I believe. And then it was like, we realized we all were so overwhelmed with mm -hmm. having our own studios and this teacher training program. We were like, okay, we need to take a pause here. And everybody decided they wanted to go their own way. And I decided I didn't want to give up on ITT Pilates. <laughs> It's really felt invested in it. So I've got this amazing group of instructors helping me and I brought them on board. That's Margaret Tappan, Fran Sholley, Ashley Belden. And I've expanded that group. Now I have Sue Aslan from Sonoma. And we have brought our own insights into it and developed it. We have far more new material that we've added it to it. Um, and we've expanded and, and grown the material, keeping it up to date with what's current uh, mm -hmm. now. Um, how are you able to manage two businesses? That sounds like a huge undertaking. I, I don't know, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> um, I, I, I do have some tremendous help. Um, and you know, one thing that's new this year uh, with with the pandemic and having to close the studio. Um, just as we were getting to that, I realized that um, it was very difficult to keep our community with us, both mm -hmm. our ABAS students and our ITT Pilates um, students. Um, and that I think we all went through this feeling of like losing everything. We were closed down in our homes and having to work out at home. And I know my clients were really missing the day-to-day -day interaction of being with us and the students being with us in the studio. And that's when I realized I needed some marketing help. Um, so I brought Calibri mm -hmm. on, um, but I also brought two amazing marketing people, Roxy Trissel and Brie McLean, that have been stellar. And they have really carried me through this pandemic um, and giving me a huge ease of mind that they're able to reach this community with me and build our community. Um, so, you know, that's been my saving grace, to tell you the truth. <laughs> um, having people like that supporting the business, supporting me. What do you enjoy most about your job? It seems like it's really important for you to have that community and have that help. So what is your favorite part about it? Yeah, my favorite part is being with my clients and with my students. Um, and my instructors. I mean, the people who, the interaction is, is just, just so revealing and intimate in ways. It's, it's you know, some long-term relationships with my clients um, that I've been able to see them progress into their movement, better movement patterns, um, better healthy pat, uh, habits for themselves. Um, 
owning their bodies, owning their own health care, learning how to take care of themselves. Um, that's very satisfying for me. Um, I love teaching new students. They are inquisitive and they challenge me and, and they force me to be a better teacher. Um, I mean, one of the things I love is that after teaching an ITT Pilates you know, master class or a workshop, I'm a better instructor. I go back to my clients and I'm much better because <laughs> I've had to really be good for them and be very clear and explicit in, in my instruction. And, and that makes me grow. Um, so it's, you know, it's those things that I think are most enjoyable for me. Yeah, that's great that you're able to still be, you know, improving and learning throughout all this time. All, yeah, all the time. And, and that's, you know, a movement practice, teaching a movement practice can do that for you. You, you never have learned it all. There's <laughs> always more. Yeah, and I'm sure there's new challenges, new injuries, things like that that you're dealing with. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned a little bit before marketing and bringing on Roxy and Brie and everything. So in terms of marketing, what do you think has been the biggest challenge for you and how have you overcome it? Not seeing people day to day and having live interaction was a big deal. Um, and so bringing on Roxy and Brie, um, they came with tremendous ideas. Um, so one thing that Roxy's been working on with ITT Pilates is creating this movement se sequence series. We've done a mat series um, on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So a weekly exercise that we put up and explaining the exercise, giving a video, um, demonstrating it, giving something, you know, new material for people. Um, mm -hmm. And that's been really fun. We're going to go on to Reformer and then Cadillac after that. So, um, and it's been great for me. It's been really fun for me to do that and get involved in that with her. Mm -hmm. um, and then Brie has been focusing on a body of work and she's created these new aspects to our newsletter. And that's also going into social media and blog. And one of the things she's done is created a client and trainer highlight series, which has been great. So it's, it's been a way for us to share who we are um, to our community. And of course, all of this is trying to expand our audience. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're trying to reach out to people who don't know who a body of work is and don't know who ITT Pilates is and finding that we need to let them know who we are. And, and you know, I think the client and trainer series is a great way because they get behind the doors with us. And, you know, what do we like about teaching? What do we like about um, our studio? Those are the questions that are answered in that highlight series. So that's been really great. Um, mm -hmm. And another thing we've done is add a wellness tips to our newsletter. So giving some um, advice on health and wellness to our clients, giving them tips on new things they can do in the Presidio. Um, so these are some of the things that I, I think have really helped us. And we're always looking for, you know, new members of our community and, and uh, introduce them to movement. Of course. Yeah, when we started working with you, I know you're like, we have this great community. How can we bring it online? And I think that you've done a really excellent job of kind of getting people together online and building the community as well. Yeah, like for instance, the, um, you know, with Zoom, you know, you, everybody's trying to look at the best you can do with Zoom and <laughs> what, what are those positive things about Zoom? <laughs> and I have to admit that it allowed us to restart our teacher training program. So we had to, of course, pause that right at the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But then we shifted to creating it online and we did a full teacher training program last summer and fall, all online extremely successful now we can do a combination of live and online and we're doing that now in our teacher training program i also taught some um zoom itt pilates master classes and what was great is that my japanese students joined in uh even live at three o'clock in the morning for them in their pajamas <laughs> wow taking pilates mat classes with me you know? they're and dedicated that, yeah, very dedicated, and, and that was wonderful to be able to experience that with them. Mm -hmm. What um, other challenges has COVID given you, and how have you worked through those? Well, um, 
you know, just staying in touch with even my trainers uh, is more challenging because I don't see them as much in the studio. So really having to work on that communication um, and being um, frequent with that communication, I would say. Um, you know, we've done all of the uh, safety protocols at the studio now that we're opened, um, which is fabulous, and the clients appreciate it, us trainers appreciate it. We're teaching private sessions. You know, it's all been very good, no issues at all. Um, I would say an advantage is that while we were shut down and not even able to teach that uh, inside the studio, we were like getting as creative as possible. So we taught outdoor sessions. We went to the park and taught at beautiful places in the Presidio. Um, we did Zoom, we did Zoom classes. We created new Zoom classes. Um, we do small intimate classes for a group of people who used to work out together in the studio. Now they work out together on Zoom. Um, so yeah, all those things. That's great. So even though it's been a challenge, it's really forced you to grow, it sounds like. It has definitely forced us to grow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so you have two businesses. You're really obviously familiar with Pilates. Do you have any advice for people who want to open a Pilates or a fitness business or studio? Yeah. Um, find a good business partner. <laughs> Don't do it alone. <laughs> I would say that. <laughs> that was, uh, it's been tough. Uh, I, there's been many times I wish I had a business partner to bounce ideas off of or share the load. Um, yeah. <laughs> You know, but so I would say that that would be my number one advice. And also, a right from the beginning, hire excellent help and put it in your budget. So mm -hmm. get the best studio manager you can get, the best lawyer you can get, the best tax accountant you can get, the best marketing people you can get. Uh, don't under budget for that. Do you think your businesses are mission aligned and why or why not? Um, yeah, so... A body of work in ITT Pilates are very mission aligned. They they uh, converge together very well. Um, so our mission statement and our, our philosophy for body of work is fitness for life for anyone. Um, so we teach more than just Pilates. We teach gyrotonic and functional fitness. Um, we give wellness advice. We have a body worker in this in the studio. We teach TRX and outdoor classes, yeah. private. So. It's much larger than just Pilates um, because we can take that philosophy of movement for life and use those different movement practices to help people have better, more efficient, more functional movement patterns in their life. Now, Pilates teacher training, the integrated teacher training, is taking Pilates and diving deep into that and using that expression of Pilates to find the functional movement within it. So with ITT Pilates, what I teach my students to do is find the essence within each Pilates exercise. And you can always teach that essence to any body in front of you. They don't have to do a perfect teaser or perfect roll-up. That's not our goal. The goal is actually to create better movement patterns that will allow them to stay functional, movement, moving pain-free for as long as possible. So that's what we teach in ITT Pilates. And I think then you can apply that to any other movement practice. So there's a great blend right there. Um, at the same time, a body of work is a live studio where our students can come in and see us mm -hmm. and see us actually teaching what we, you know, and practice what we teach, uh, the, see that approach live. Um, so I think that they blend really well. Um, and uh, we, you know, I have clients often want to become instructors and, and then go through our teacher training program, mm -hmm. or also students who are going through the teacher training program become clients at, at ABOW. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it's really amazing to hear you talk about both these studios. You clearly have so much passion for it. It's really beautiful. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, so for everyone watching, if you have any questions, you can type them in now and... Um, we can answer them. And while you do that, I came up with one more question, which is, do you have a favorite um,
type of movement or exercise, anything like that. It sounds like you've done everything. <laughs> oh, I just, yeah. I mean, oh, <laughs> I, I love all movement. I, uh, I, I will go through periods. Like when I was a trapeze flyer, that was my favorite kind of movement at the time because I'll, I'll go in deep and try to learn everything about it um, mm -hmm. and explore that movement fully. Um, I just ended ski season and all I could think about was skiing, you know, so, uh, <laughs> so, um, so I love all kinds of movement. Um, but I would say both Pilates and, and gyro are my go-to for just, you know, freeing up the body, freeing up the joints, exploring my range of movement, expanding my range of movement and just finding joy in simple movement. And they certainly help me, um, keep doing the other things that I love to do, such as skiing mm -hmm. and flying and biking and everything else. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> um, so we have some questions coming in. Anna said, as a digital worker, I find I get neck pain. Do you have advice for that and combating the impact of so much time sitting? Yeah. Oh, boy, I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll just say that, <laughs> yeah, it's wrecking our necks, um, all of us. Um, there are some great ways you can work with that. It, it does take someone looking at you and really identifying what is the pattern you're falling into. I can't say, and I don't like to assume that I know everybody has the same neck issue because that's not true. Um, our bodies are very unique. Um, but if you can find someone who can look at you from the side from the, and the back and look at your cervical alignment when you're sitting um, and find and, and help you restore the natural curves, that would be the best advice, you know. If you can't do that, then try to pull yourself away and do spinal motions, such as just rounding the back and arching the back, including your cervical spine, doing side bend, you know, doing rotation, just restore that mobility because all this time when we're in front of a camera or the computer, we're in a holding pattern and we sort of kind of glue ourselves into this holding pattern. And that often creates fatigue in our muscles and tissues. And so just actually moving, releasing that tension can do a lot. Do you have any kind of advice for how often people should be getting up to move between just sitting at their computer? I say at least every hour. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if not every 30 minutes would be great, you know, um, you know, put the glass of water in the kitchen. So you have to go get up and drink from that water and then, you know, have a big thermos thing. And your goal is to drink that whole thing. Mm -hmm. and take as many trips to the kitchen as it takes. <laughs> That's great. I will definitely. And then that'll take that. you to the bathroom, too, and so you'll be peeing. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I'm going to try that. I like that advice. Yeah, and then as you're going through the doorway, do a pec stretch, you know, <laughs> just go like this. I have a bar here I hang from every wow. time I pass through the doorway. <laughs> <laughs> that seems pretty perfect. I know working at home, it's very challenging to remember to get up and move around. Yeah. And the longer you wait to get up and move around, the more movement you're going to need to do to release the tension. So like if you sit for an hour, you're going to need at least a 10 minute, you know, workout if, to just kind of let all that tension go. If you sit for four hours, you're going to need a 20 minute or 30 minute workout. So break it up, you know, and yeah. do shorter bits so you don't have to do that longer workout. All right. That sounds good. I'll definitely be trying that out. I know I could use it. Um, let's see. Andrina asked, do you have a best get out of bed pose? Yeah, just bringing one knee to your chest um, at a time. And then also, um, you know, just swaying your knees to one side. I do that a little bit to just restore mobility in your lumbar spine. Um, and if, if you get tight in your thoracic spine or neck, then just moving into small curl and arch. Another thing is if you are a person who lie on your back all night, you might want to lie into your stomach and just do a simple little cobra before you get up. That would help restore the balance in your spinal joints and tissue. 
Awesome. Well, I will be trying that out as well. <laughs> um, okay, so it looks like that's all the questions, but if anyone else has questions, you can type them in now. Um, if not, Jean, it was really a pleasure to have you. I always just love getting to know people through these and you know hear all their wisdom. So I really appreciate you joining us. It was great. Thank you, Rose. And thank you, everyone, for your questions. That was really fun. Yeah. So I think that's everything. So Jean, once again, thank you for joining. And everyone who watched, thank you for coming as well. This was great as usual. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. Bye.